Welcome to episode 81 of the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. 81. 81. That's quite a few. 81 episodes. That's crazy. That's a prime number. No, it's not. It's nine times nine. It's a square number. 81? I don't know. I, <laughs> it's not Mark, prime. Mark this. You guys are looking at me because I'm the Asian guy. What? The math one? You know math, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Today, today we have me, Taco. Jason with Concealment Solutions. And Meg Older Mark is here as well. Woohoo. Hey, so I, just to start out, I met our fan or listener at Gunny's the, the other day. All of them? All one of them? The one. Oh, the nice. one. So I was at Gunny's and with a coworker. We were looking at stuff. And this guy uh, comes up and he's like, hey, Taco. And I'm like, what? Wait, wait. <laughs> wait how did he recognize you from a podcast? Well, because, a that's what I did. because you're Asian. <laughs> because I'm Asian, <laughs> I was the only Asian guy in Gunny's. In Gunny's. That's got to be him. It's like, that must be Taco. <laughs> no, but it's, it's pretty funny because I looked at him and I'm trying to think because only certain people call me Taco. Like either right. either the people who know me from like YouTube, right, or podcast. But podcasts, you don't see my face, right? right. So, anyways. And, and so I asked him, I was like, uh, you know, so... Uh, <laughs> Where do you know me from? This is a little creepy. <laughs> but yeah, he, he said the podcast. Yeah. But I guess, you know, we post stuff on Facebook and stuff on the Concealed wow. Taco Dudes. When, yes. you, when you say when we, we say you we, mean you too. We actually mean <laughs> you. <laughs> me. Yeah. So yeah, I saw our listener. Awesome. That so, is, that's great. How did he say we're doing? He said we're doing good. Okay, good. To keep up the good work. Yeah. I had so. a run-in with a fan as well. Um, Must have been was, the same guy. It was on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I was running an ad. We're doing some targeting, trying to figure out the best way to sell mag holders, online to, you know, online advertising, uh-huh. and tailoring the, the ad targets. Uh-huh. Anyway, the, the first question that came up on the thread... Hey, are you guys the CTD dudes? Is my like, yes, we are. <laughs> nice. So, I thought that was great. A random awesome. ad out in the world. It was like targeting in Arkansas or something. Huh. So, hmm. Well, there's nothing else to do in Arkansas. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> listen to the podcast. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, I got recognized at Shot Show once because of my chin beard. The chin beard. And I didn't have <laughs> I didn't have any video or anything. And he's like, stops, looks. Jason, I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I listened to the concealer. It was the Gun Dudes Gun podcast, podcast back, back then. then. I'm like, oh, and how did you recognize me? <laughs> the beard. I'm like, okay. That and he what probably I- tried to. Uh, um, Probably tried to call your number like everyone else was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just, your phone flash rang mobbed. once. Yeah, yeah. Flash mobbed you. <laughs> Let's not relive that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into some sponsors. Oh, yeah, we should do that. That's me. How about we talk about Black Eyes? Okay. They have been doing some amazing stuff. And what surprises me is the artistic license that, uh, you know, the the customers give Lee. Yeah. But then he's amazing. He's an artist. I don't know how this stuff comes out like that. It's it's beautiful. Yeah. And when one thing people need to understand also, when you go to somebody like Lee, who is incredibly talented at what he does, and say, recreate this, and you show him a picture... That's like the most difficult thing you can ask somebody to do because it's never going to turn out exactly the same. Now, if you're doing a dip or something like that, that's different. But when you're talking like a custom Cerakote and stuff like that, matching colors from a picture and patterns and stuff like that gets tricky. So do what I do and say, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Go with it. Yeah. Yeah. He has yeah. not disappointed me yet. <laughs> he well, still is able to do replicate some stuff really well. He though. does. Amazing what he does. Well, and I kind of underappreciated that for a while. Yeah. Um, I was all hung up on the uh, the Teflon and the and what it does for your gun's function. Right. Yeah. But th- this, you know, he really is an artist. Yeah. How about Utah Air Guns? Ooh, I've I spent a fair bit of time there this week. I know that that place is like, man, it's getting expensive for me. Have you, have you been <laughs> into their back room? Which back room? Just the hallway down the I've side. I've been, I've been all around. Yeah. there. I can't believe how much inventory they have. I mean, just in optics, it's like they're just. 
they're stacked high and deep. With things like Night Force. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't stock right. cheap stuff. They, don't they have some cheap stuff, stuff but, buy, but they have yeah. some really nice stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it, I was impressed at the we, level of their inventory. We need to go down there with Mark and help him pick out his first yeah. air gun. Yeah, I know. I've been holding off. Yep. I was, I've been looking at some stuff. And I'll, we'll get into this one, what I did with guns, but some less expensive options that are still going to tick all the boxes. Okay. And so there's there's some really cool stuff that uh, Justin and I were talking about this I, week. I need to go down and talk to Justin about that FX crown. Yeah? Yeah. Not the Cayman? Not the Cayman. Not I'm going yet. with like the <laughs> traditional the rifle on this size. one. Yeah. Yeah. And that thing is going to rock. Yep. 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 You know what? I forgot to mention slickery as the, the yeah. code for black eyes. Or just was... tell him the the concealed taco dude sent me. Right. Was it was it Paco? Paco the taco dude. Paco the taco dude sent me. <laughs> He'll um, know what you're talking about. But I was not going to forget to use the term uh, air candy. Air candy. Yeah. Yep. Coupon code air candy. At That'll Utah Air Guns. Give you free shipping and free turret stickers yep free turret stickers so you can dial in quicker on your targets. yeah it's kind of like having a custom turret that isn't like permanent or whatever yeah you can change it yep and yep. if you were to use the code flt001 where would you be shopping noe bullet molds.com betcha yeah <laughs> and we are in the noe studio today we yep. are probably know the sound quality is a little bit better it's been, it's nice to be back. I'm still breaking up a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it is nice to be back. I got my uh, um, coronavirus shot. Ah. Uh, so. How are you feeling? I feel fine. Okay, good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as a result, I'm, I, you know, people are less afraid to be around me. Oh. So that's good. Okay. That um, is good. I, I wasn't ever afraid to be around. <laughs> <laughs> so you you guys have been, have you picked up and actually made the pellets yet from your NOE bullet mold mold? So for the air guns? Yeah, the, the air guns, yeah. I have not yet. I still need to, I gave Jason You've made his. some pellets. I've made pellets. But the slug. we're talking about the hollow point the slugs. The 22 right. slug, yeah. Yeah, the one I, that we had the same. I got, picked up my mold. I have not had a minute to prep it or do anything with it. So yeah, I had every intention of getting with Taco last week to, to do some casting with it, and I thought it was going to happen. I've just been so stinking busy in the shop. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. but I did use several other NOE bullet molds this last <laughs> this week. Yeah, that's shocking. I did some. Well, I could talk about it and what 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 I did with guns. But I will say that I came out with a new video, and you know that one 195 grain hollow point 38 special yes. bullet uh -huh. that we we've the, talked the about weird, a lot. The weird, weird, yeah, the thing yeah. that looks like a 55 gallon drum. <laughs> yes, the little flying cylinder right. or shot glass or whatever. Uh -huh. Anyways, I I did get that video done, and so you can see us. Are you shooting it into a gel? Is that the one? Or so I'm. I hope to get the gel video, okay. the gel test done this next week. Okay. I have the footage and everything, but yeah, I, it just takes so much time to edit video. Not enough time in the day. Not enough time. So well, yeah, check that out, and you can see what the bullets look like and you know shooting them in a suppressed marlin 1894 cst huh. threaded neat it's huh dude that is it is so quiet it's one of the quietest guns i've shot wow it's weird it, you, you hear the hammer click and then you see the milk jug just like explode and so you hear the the explosion but you don't really hear the gun firing so it almost looks like my audio is so out of sync. Like click splash. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh. So, anyways. Very cool. So okay. yeah, NOE bullet molds. Look, look there. I mean, even if you're like me, who hasn't done a lot of this stuff, it's good for you know obviously weird things like weird calibers, shapes, sizes of bullets. But you look at it for the mainstream, 124 grain uh, for your nine millimeter. Uh, yep. You know, 230 grain for your 45. If you can't find this stuff, make it yourself. Yes, and the stuff you make is... And we know you shoots. can't find it, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it's kind of fun because I can take family and friends and people shooting right? because I have primers yeah. that 
you know, I just cast up my own nine mil or whatever and 300 blackout and we go out and shoot and they kind of just shoot as much as they want and it's, yeah. You're one of the few people doing that right now. Yep. 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 For sure. Cool. Let's jump into some listener feedback. All right. I got some listener feedback and some of this is from a couple episodes ago. Okay. And so the crazy Scotsman, he says, a lot of states don't do constitutional carry because they make so much off the licenses. They use it as an excuse as a lot of people still would get the license so they can carry in multiple states. I think I was talking about yeah. that, that mm -hmm. even if Utah passes that, which it has been moving along. Right. It looks like it's going through. Yeah. So even if you can carry in your own state, having a concealed carry permit for your own state usually is beneficial because it allows you to carry in other states. Yeah. We're almost surrounded by constitutional carry states. Except, except for Colorado. Colorado. I always drive to Washington every year, yeah. and Oregon pisses me off. <laughs> yeah, I cannot get a permit in Oregon because nope. you have to be a resident, a resident of, of a state. touching state. Yep. Wow. So. And you can't have a Idaho permit if you don't live in Idaho, and then have it work. Yep. It's it's, it's really <laughs> it's really messed up, Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So yeah, he says. I would say most instructors, including myself, really wouldn't lose a, lo a whole lot as training is always in demand. Yeah. And especially with all these new shooters. Yeah. I mean, I would think that if you're uh, kind of like a, well, if you're an instructor and you have some intro to handgun yep. type, type classes, yeah. man, you'd stay busy. Yep. There's a lot of people who and, need training. Oh, for sure. And mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people who are seeking it out too. Yeah. So he says... I think a lever and revolver would be a great combo, and I'm sure the wife would like it, as I am partially biased, as I am a big boar guy. Cool. So. Yeah, I mean, where can you go? And he's he's mentioning, he's talking about the anniversary. anniversary guns. Yeah, because I'm looking for suggestions for a pair of anniversary guns to, you know, maybe get engraved or something. So, revolver, lever action, that's a cool combo. Yeah. So, all right. Is your wife a big board girl? She actually really likes shooting my 4570. Cool. Because she loves how it makes stuff just explode. Big explode, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you're just shooting like steel targets, it's not quite as fun for her. She likes to see the, you know, feel the big ex boom and then see the big explosion. See the destruction the on the other yeah. end of the boom. So if you're shooting 4570 into paper, She'd probably just pass. Well, that's kind of boring anyway. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. And James O. says, uh, Full lead taco, looking at 1K, I sold a weapon. The cost saving of uh, getting a 22 cal is return of investment every time I pull the trigger. I want an air gun. I can refill myself with an air compressor. Those scuba tanks are cool looking, but getting them filled in an emergency ain't likely. Ideas? Yeah. And I think we covered been, this yeah, in on the last, the last episode. episode. I'm really thinking one of those little tiny compressors just to fill your yeah. gun isn't a bad way to go. And especially... You could plug, plug it into, into a my, car battery yeah. and that's the way to well, do yeah, it. Well, yeah, if I can plug it into my the outlet in my car... And you still get, what, 3,000 PSI or yeah. something? Yeah, okay. it'll, it'll charge your gun. It won't fill your tank, your scuba so tank. So you don't want to try it, right. try it on your scuba tank. Right, but, but you, yeah, so you could. You just would. How, how much of a, how much of a jump is it for something that will handily take care of the scuba tank? So the compressors we're talking about are multi-stage, multi-stage, and they're roughly about the size of a lunchbox. Okay, the, the One, ones that can that, fill a that a can gun. fill your gun, gun, right? And they're about three to four or five hundred bucks. Yeah, depending when on when you're talking about a multi-stage air compressor that can fill your scuba tank. Now you're talking seventeen hundred or up. more. That's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but having that small one to fill up your, you know, in an emergency situation, just to fill your gun. Yeah, would it fill it enough so that you could go shooting forever and don't worry about it? Shooting forever? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it will fill it the, to the same capacity right. that your scuba tank will. Right. So, do you need to step up unless you're like a shop? Or someplace that's filling to scuba have, tanks. To have an, a, a, one of the big compressors. Right. It would be convenient, but at the same time, like for us here, if you go down to 
You take yeah. air guns. It's they, like it's ten, 10 bucks. bucks to have your tank filled. <laughs> your scuba mm. tank. Yeah, you can okay. you can go to a dive shop if you know a firefighter. They'll probably fill it for you for free. You know, bring him a Talk pizza. To Lee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good point. He Lee's already told me he would also. Yeah. So there's there's options, and with how much you get out of how many fills on your gun you get out of those tanks, I mean, it's gonna. If you're in, if if we're talking like you know apocalypse scenarios, you're not gonna be shooting as much, right? And that thing's yeah. gonna last a lot longer. I mean, yeah, yeah, it just depends if you unless you're shooting, shooting the, the hot hot blitz. And blitz. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that's right. not full auto yeah, thirty full cal. Which right. in an apocalypse situation, that's the gun I would want. <laughs> yeah, but, that, that semi-auto just hit those zombies. <laughs> one at I a think time. that I have a project but, this coming week because I deal with. You know, in my job, uh-huh. I deal with tanks of argon. Oh, yeah. And the argon tanks are considered empty at 3,100 PSI for our purposes. Uh huh. So I wonder how many scuba tanks you could fill? I could fill with argon, and is argon going to change? I don't know. We've talked a little bit about that. That's with a good Justin. question for Justin. And yeah. He might he and, might know. And there were there were some scary results with some of the gases. Wasn't yeah. it, wasn't it helium that gets hot? Yeah, or something? it does. It could be yeah, explosive gets way hot. or yeah. something like that. Helium yeah. gets way hot when you depressurize it. Yeah, and xenon does too. But huh. yeah, so that'd be weird to have like <laughs> heat coming, like making your barrel hot. Yeah, shooting pellets out uh-huh. of an air gun. Yep, that'd be nuts. But, but anyways, the air gun's the way to go. That's I when I was talking to Justin this week, I told him already. I said I've already decided this is the year of the air gun. Yeah. Just makes sense. Chinese New Year. Uh-huh. Year of the air gun. <laughs> For me, it's, it's the year of, a... year of the 4570. <laughs> right. I'm shooting a lot of 4570. But What else you got? Okay. James E. says, Hey, guys, just found your podcast. Listen to a couple of the most recent episodes, and it looks like I will be downloading and filling my phone with older episodes. Thank you. Oh. I have been reloading for about 12 years. The most gratifying area I find in reloading is my casting. All of my firearms center around my cast bullets. Cool. I personally do not own an NOE mold, but I will be looking into them. Cool. That's, yeah, if you that have... That sounds like we have two listeners now. Yeah, two listeners. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. a new one. If you're a caster and you have, you know, primarily use, like, say, Lee molds or... So Lee molds are really cheap. They, they yeah. do the job, but they're... They're made out if of. If you're gonna do a lot of volume, you're. Yeah, it's they're just. They're not gonna hold up. And the Lyman ones, the older Lyman ones, they they're made really well. RCBS, some of those. But man, you you get the the NOE bullet molds molds, and yeah. they are they're nice. They're gonna last. They last. So, anyways, check them out. <clears throat> and then, all right, this one was from Kenny from the Eagle Eye Shooting Channel. Oh, your oh. buddy. Yeah. And he sent it to you. He says, he hey, Jason. Me. Yeah. Oh. Love the podcast. Tell Mike Taco to build a COVID-15 AR. Oh, that's right. COVID-15 AR. <laughs> hmm. who, who makes those lowers? I don't know. I haven't seen one. Hmm. And then he also says he needs a survivor patch. LOL. <laughs> and he, he says he's looking for a belt holder for AICS mags, short action, in Coyote Brown Cryptic for PRS. Yeah, I, I emailed him back. I sent that to you. I, I remember that now. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't realize who it was from when I was looking at it. So what, is, uh, what are AICS mags? It's, those are like, it's basically the bolt action uh, yeah. detachable mags. Got it's, it. It's a yep. pattern type. Which I, I talked to him. He's going to have to send me a mag, and okay. I can make him what he wants. Are they for... So they're for bolt guns and um, I guess I don't. Yeah, so I have. I, I don't I've know got, if I have. I just a looked at the magazine and I went. I don't have anything like that. Send me. Yeah. Send me one of yours, and I'm sure I can put. I have one yeah. for my 308. So, yeah, I've got one. But it. But same. I don't know if it's if the it's same. five or ten round. I've got yeah. a ten and a five. So. So, so Kenny, maybe talk to Taco if he's got one that'll make it even easier. Yeah, I'll have to check. Borrow yours and see. But but. Yeah, so he wants a basically kind of like a a mag holder pouch thing for these bolt action mags. Right, for doing for, matches. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. 
So for those of you who don't know, Kenny builds some like amazing rifles. He's built my six arc rifle, my 22 Creedmoor, hmm. and uh, my nine mil bolt at uh, nine millimeter bolt action rifle. Hmm. So nice. We have we have lots of cool projects planned for the future. Yes. Have, have you built any mag carriers for the magazine fed shotguns yet? Yes. Cool. I wondered about that. Yeah. What, what do they look like? Uh, they're ginormous. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I've only done one that I can think of, actually for Casey for doing three gun, and it was it. Yeah, it was big. And probably heavy when it's full. And I'm just trying to. I'm drawing a blank because I usually I will build my own mold for it. Right. And and measure it and then fit it to the magazine after I build it. But I can't think of where that mold is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know I've made one, and I know that's how I... Oh, I know where it is. Never mind. It's in the closet. But it, but they're like... Yeah. I don't know that all the all the shotgun magazines are going to be the same. That's mm. where it gets kind of yeah. weird. Oh, shotgun mags. There's yeah. a lot of different kinds. Right. Right. So. But So, are you done with listener feedback? There's one last one. Okay. Well, it's, I have one, too, but go ahead. PJR, he says... And he left a review on one of the podcast clients. Oh, yeah? So, that was... Much appreciated. But he says, my favorite pod, these guys have a good time. It's fun riding along. Oh, cool. So thank you. And we do appreciate when you guys take the time to write positive reviews about yeah. the podcast. If you don't have to help the negative reviews. You can write negative ones no, too. That's just all right. Just like <laughs> says, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at right. all. <laughs> I was talking with Patrick this oh, week. Yeah. Actually, while I was up skiing. You know he what? Was, he was texting me back and forth about a recommendation for a 45 Colt lever action, and he recommended a Taylor's uh, Comanchero, I believe is what it was. Ooh. I'd never heard of Taylor's. Apparently, you have some. Yeah. Um, it looks like they make really nice stuff. Probably not easy to get right now, <laughs> but he said he's got over 14,000 rounds through his without a hitch. Nice. Oh, dang. Yeah. That's nice. So. That's cool. I'll I think check that I out. think Gunny still has a 45 Colt lever action. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. So you'll have to go check it out. Too bad I don't have an $800 credit at Gunny's like I do at another. Oh shop. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned Patrick uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I, he's a skier too. Yeah. You, you said you were up skiing. Yeah. He's a big skier. I send him pictures. I'm like, this is what I'm doing right now. I was cross country ski. Oh, he's okay. he's more of a downhiller. Right. But, yeah, when we had him on the show of last winter, yeah, probably about a year ago, he, yeah. he was out here skiing. Well, I wanted to, um, I was going to try to slip Patrick in as kind of the unofficial sponsor. Bulldog because, Bakery? Yeah. Yeah, my it's stomach bulldog. is full today yeah. <laughs> for this podcast. I was not, he sent me a Super Bowl package, which is, you know, a, a pretzel kit. Nice. Yeah, so uh, I brought him in here to the podcast today instead of just... Recording them all for tomorrow. And we did yeah. eat them, and they were delicious. <laughs> they were so, really good. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you, Patrick, because I ate two of them. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Bulldog Bakery is in Chicago. They're primarily a commercial bakery. Right. It's not like, you know, your corner store. Yeah. yeah. But if, if you're close enough, you got to look him up, and, and the, he's got great stuff. Yeah, he does. And he asked me, how many cookies do I need to send to get a taco dude sticker i'm like <laughs> dude you don't got to send me any cookies though they are always appreciated yep so i've which patrick i'm sorry i just noticed that the envelope with i threw some extra stuff in there for you is still sitting by the door waiting for a stamp apparently mm. we don't have any stamps now it's got grease stains and salt all over it from the press <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway we'll get that out to you uh patrick cool Let's talk two episodes ago, Taco, I'm, I'm pointing at Taco. Blame me. Taco promised our listeners a giveaway. And I am honestly surprised, unless you've just been filtering them, that we haven't got <laughs> emails going, what gives? Where's the contest? You said you're giving stuff away. Maybe they're not really paying attention. That could be. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they're totally fine with what they have. Oh. We have content. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they're content. The the information I'm getting is prize enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's get to this. Okay, so what do we got for the giveaway? Okay, we have got, 
five different packages we're going to give away. Well, one package and four items. <laughs> yeah. So, Taco, they're sitting by you. First, we have a Tacware flashlight. It's the TW350. So it's the smaller one. Super cool. You change through the modes by twisting a, a bezel, I guess, on it instead of clicking the button a million times. Super cool. So that's one prize. Okay, prize number two is Buckeye Target skull-shaped knuckle duster with a concealment solutions holster for it. My daughter oh, it's, really a it's a opener. bottle opener that doubles as a knuckle duster. You could punch someone with this bottle opener. Or you could open your bottle. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So my daughter wants that because she's she and her friends are you know like walking from work back to the car in the right. parking lot. And stuff. I, I talked to her yeah. about that. I'm I am working on something. Good. But well, uh, she better enter the the contest. Yeah, then. she had. There, there she goes. She's probably disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Third item is the Aqua Titanium Grappling Hook, Woo-hoo! as seen on Supergirl. Yeah. I think is that what that show's called? I've never. I watched think so. It. I think that's what they were saying. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it has super sharp tines. That's what those are called. Yeah. Right? Pointy things. The pointy things, they're they're sharp. Think, think about made that, out of whipping titanium. around on the end of a piece of 550 cord. Yeah. yeah, and you can screw one of those pointy things into the end, and you can use it to, like, poke holes and stuff. Stuff. We'll just say <laughs> stuff. All right. Pretty cool. Does it screw into the knuckle duster? No. <laughs> oh, man, that would be awesome. <laughs> okay. Then the next one is the Tacware Artie tool. Yep. And it's it's a tool that's shaped like an AR-15. It's a multi-tool. And it does a it's got lot a of pry different things. Bar, screwdriver, pocket hook, bottle opener. The little hex little, thing. Some hex or, head wrenches. Yeah. And yeah. So pretty cool. Those are cool. And, and then last but not least, this from Utah Air Guns. This is a Firefield scope. It is a one to six. Power scope. So that's and, a good power for air gun distances. Yeah. yeah. Or like a you know, like a little twenty two or something. And a hat. Oh yeah, I forgot about the hat. And a, a, a multi cam Utah air guns hat. So alright, so what do they have to do to enter this Which, giveaway? If you if you win the scope and your hat doesn't show up, it's because I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in order to we're gonna do ran, like a random drawing. Random drawing. To but, enter the random drawing, so it's really complicated, so pull over to the side of the freeway, get your notebook out, Taco's going to explain the rules in detail. Okay, all you got to do <laughs> is send us an email at concealedtacodudes at gmail.com with a recommendation for a pair of firearms for me to get. <laughs> <laughs> for you, this for is me. Wow. This well, is sounding for me, very yeah, yeah. selfish. For yeah. me, period. <laughs> this is for me to get for my wife and it's my anniversary. Your anniversary. Yeah, it's, it's the big 20th this year. To be possibly engraved commemoratively or otherwise finished. Yes. Something awesome. to, you know, mark the occasion. Okay. And but you can't use. They've got to be new ideas. Yeah, the Thompson and the 1911 combo. It's already taken. You can't use that one. And the lever action. action. And lever action. It's and a high revolver. power in the 1911. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna enter in. Yeah. Yeah. A high, the O3 Colt. High, and the, then the high power. High power 45 and high power carbine. <laughs> You're talking about high point. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I got confused. That's different. Yeah, the Browning High Power you is were going, very... You were going top shelf. I was going bottom shelf. <laughs> yeah. Although someone could re- could recommend that. Yes, they could. It wouldn't be a... And it would be fitting. It would not be fitting. <laughs> not for a 20th. So, maybe, maybe for maybe a first, a first. When, when you're poor and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So, you have to send us an email with your recommendation for the anniversary... anniversary gun uh, combo yeah a pair of guns so it can't, it, so yeah it can't be revolver and lever action and it can't be a thompson and a 1911 yeah and it doesn't have although to those be, are really good recommendations right it's just i'm looking for a variety of options right and it, it doesn't could, have to be 
a pistol and a, and a long gun. It could be two long guns. It could be two pistols. It could yeah. be any combination of things. Okay. How about a PPK and a PPQ? <laughs> that could be a recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Okay, what do we got next? Maybe we should hit some our last two sponsors first, and we'll just flow the rest okay. of the show. Mag Holder Mark, anything it's, new? Well, sort of. Has anyone gotten in the van because you have candy? Yes, actually quite a few people okay, have. <laughs> and, and thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Even though it's costing us uh, 20%. But, no, it's totally worth it. We love it. Yeah. Um, chuckle every single time. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I love seeing the discount codes coming. Yep. And then you get a little sad inside because the money's not there. But <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to be revamping the SIG portion of the offerings a little bit. Okay. Because the 228, the 229, the 226, which are all very, very similar uh-huh. based on magazine capacity. Uh, and similar so but different. Similar but different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they fit well into the new generation of... SIG mag holder. And you're talking the one with the spring steel yeah, retention. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, Dave Dave Soam from Spanish Fork, the trucker guy that was in our uh, Mag 40 class Probably back in I, the day. Probably if yeah. I saw him. <laughs> well, he's, uh, he's, he's got one of the new ones for his 226, I think. Uh-huh. And um, anyway, I basically, if you're a SIG person, mag holder is falling in line with your desire for mag holders. Oh, cool. So just hit me up on the SIGs. Yeah. And that's all I've got to say this week, other than Mrs. Mag Holder is getting these things out, you know, probably 40% of them the same day. Yeah. And the other 60% the next day. Well, if they'd stop ordering them so often, she could keep up a little easier. It's, it's funny because the, <laughs> the app on her phone goes off. You know, ding, ding. It's like, oh. It's, now it's just like... <laughs> Oh man, I shouldn't leave this thing on and I'd have to get up and look and see what somebody ordered. Yeah, that's I used to have that too. Yeah. My, yeah. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, well, cool. thank you for your business. Uh concealment solutions. We are hard at work with just fulfilling your orders, always working on some new stuff, always working on custom stuff. So if you don't see what you're looking for, get in touch with me. Preferably not through social media. Because it might take me a while to get back to you, and I just I hate it. So, send me an email, Jason at ConcealmentSolutions.com, or call me on the phone, three eight five two zero eight eight nine one four. It's that easy. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, I had one person. It, it's probably been a couple weeks now, but couldn't get the discount code to work, and I need to clarify the discount code, which Marks is getting in the va- get in the van. I have candy. Mine is show me the candy. It's all one word. There's no spaces or anything. Just <laughs> type it all out, yep. and that's that's how they work. So if it doesn't work one way, try it another way. But yeah, that'll that'll save you a chunk. And uh, and I always throw in some stuff. In fact, if you use that code right now, and I may have mentioned this last time. If you use that code, I'm gonna give you a Paco the Taco Dude refrigerator magnet. Cool. <laughs> Till, until they're gone, and there's not that many. So. <laughs> <laughs> limited edition. They're, they're limit, yes, limited edition, until Sticker Mule has them on sale again. <laughs> 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 anyway, okay, what we did with guns. So I, I actually did some stuff with guns this week. I actually did some swapping with gun guns. Swapping. Gun swapping. <laughs> uh, I had a Hollow Sun 507, it was the C, right? I can't remember. I, it's it, a hollow sun. Yeah, the 507 looks good. Um, Something with a red dot that, on it. Yeah, which I'm buying a lot more optics right now, trading for a lot more optics right, right now because they don't have any guns I want. So I'm like, I'll take that, I'll take that. And I got that home and I was like, huh, I sold Taco my CZ P10F that this was going to go on. <laughs> right. By the way, I shot that and yeah. I, I like it a I, lot. I'm not surprised. I, Does it use the 75B magazines? No. Okay. Is it, it uses some weird thing? Big. Oh. Bigger they're, magazines. They're 19 they're even round bigger. magazines. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. they, they, I, I think uh, they're different. Kinda. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I may have to, now that you've got one, I may have to borrow the mag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we worked out a trade um, for a, a one to, or a four fixed power scope, right? Yeah. Fixed four power right on. Right on scope. scope. And some lead when I eventually get over there and we cast <laughs> and a 1919 Swedish Mauser in 
6.5 by 55 Swedish, which is kind of cool. Wow. It's kind of an ugly one. The stock is partly missing and partly chopped. But it's not too bad. No, it's not too bad. It was goofy where it was threaded. And we in and you speculated it was for uh, training. Yeah. So bolts. a lot of these these Swedish Mausers, they have like uh, threading on the end, mm -hmm. and it's not because somebody uh, butched Threaded it. it. Yeah. yeah, that's the way they were. They made it for, and this is what I was telling Jason is that yeah. they used to have practice bullets that were wood, and they would screw on a little wood bullet shredder on the end. Yeah. Oh. And so, so you as shoot the bullet it comes it out, it just splinters it. it. Yeah. yeah. And so they That's use cool. that for a training. That's cool. maker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But I did find um, aftermarket, so after World War II, when these were kind of, I guess, decommissioned or people had them for hunting and whatever they were using them for, had the same thing. Because I, I was just going to find a thread protector to put on it, mostly just to make it look a little cleaner. If I'm being honest, yeah. but you, there are flash hiders that you can find that are they're vintage flash hiders. They weren't they weren't made when the guns were made new necessarily, but it was something that they people started making afterwards to put on them after the war and stuff like that. So I'll and I think you can pick them up for like five or six bucks. So I'll probably end up with one of those. I took it to Gene because I, I wanted him. I'm like I don't know what the thread pitch is. I don't even know what to look for. And so he got me the thread pitch and this and that, and that's what led me to those flash hiders. But uh, he looked at it and he's like, "Wow, this is this is nice." He says, "If you put a, because you can buy the the old stocks, mm -hmm. so that you know the gun was crap, so they stripped the stock off it and they're selling the stocks or whatever." He says, "If you get one of those and put it on, he's like, this is this will probably be worth about six hundred bucks, which was a whole lot less than, <laughs> than, than the trade value that we." That we worked yeah, out I gave, on it. I gave Jason a killer deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you I'm, got a killer deal, too. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> uh, what, what I was going to say is it sounded like one of those deals that you give your friends once in a while. Yeah. You know, where, yeah. Well, and yeah, and it worked out to, we both we both ended up with stuff that we wanted, and mm -hmm. it was a good trade, and we're happy. So that's cool, because I've been wanting something like that that I could kind of tinker with, just like what I'm talking about. Yeah, you've been talking about how and, you've, you've wanted a military surplus yeah, rifle. Right. But you don't want a Mosin Nagant. No, I don't. And this one kind of feels <laughs> it, that. It ticked the boxes. Yeah. And, and you and picked up some brass for me so we can someday load some stuff for it. And I, yeah, and the other thing, too, is that you have a 6.5 Creedmoor, right? Yes. So you could use some of the same bullets if you, you know, right. to load in, in both. Yeah. I Bull would, I, ballistically, how far apart are they? The, the 6.5 by 55 cartridge... Now you can buy you can buy like modern rifles chambered mm -hmm. in that, right? And those you can really bump up the pressures and the velocity. Right. So it's action limited, like the ninety three Mauser or something. Yeah, you yeah. just yeah. I mean, you don't want to push them too hard, right? But you know, usually you can get like a. I mean, this is just off the top of my head. You know, a one hundred and forty grain, six point five bullet. You know, going about twenty five, twenty six hundred feet per second. Wow. So cool. It's it's kind of like a slightly slower than a 6.5 Creedmoor, but if you were to have it in a modern action, you could maybe get higher velocities than a Creedmoor. Mm, got it. Cool. So anyway, I'm excited to play with that. Oh, all my time down at Utah Air Guns. So I finally I finally decided, and I I traded in my Mark III, my Wildcat. Oh, I, you you traded in the Wildcat. I did. Did I, you walk I, out with a gun? The Bandit? Yes, I traded it <laughs> for the Diana Bandit. No. So, so for, for those of you who don't know, the Diana Bandit is like, what, how much is that? 180 bucks. $180 gun. Pistol. Pistol. And they're awesome. And the Wildcat <laughs> is uh, like a... 12 to 13 yeah, 12 hundred dollar $1,300 gun. gun. No, not quite. He is putting together a, a dream tactical for me. Is it going to be better than tacos? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> My crown is like... The, the crown is kind of the cream pretty, of the crop. It's pretty fancy. Yeah. Uh, but but you don't have it. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting... I think I'm going to get one of uh, Justin's... Oh, that's right. Like his, one of his he's, personal it, used one of his, ones, so it, I could get it cheaper. And Right, right. 
I remember that conversation now last week. So anyway, they're, he's putting together one of those for me. The cool thing about that gun is it's got the bigger bottle on it, so it'll hold more. The main reason I, I traded in the Mark III, the bullpup, the magazine, was right in my... I couldn't shoot it left-handed. Uh, and I'm not... I'm left-eye dominant. I'm not left-handed, but I prefer to shoot a long gun left-handed because of that. And it just frustrated me. One of my, my oldest sons the same way, and so I just thought... I might as well get something that everybody can shoot because yeah. we're, we're gonna. That's a family goal, right? We're all gonna shoot more this year, and air guns is the route we're taking. So you have a completely opposite approach. You mm -hmm. like sell everything and then get one thing that everyone can use. Mm -hmm. I just buy everyone one thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you have deeper pockets than I do, apparently. But uh, so anyway, the other cool thing I like about it is it it uses an AR buffer tube, so you can put whatever AR stock on it you want. It uses an AR grip, so you can, those are That's interchangeable. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And it'll have a little more air capacity in it. I should, I'll still be able to shoot slugs and pellets out of it, which was the main reason I didn't go with the, uh, the Cayman, because it's not set up to shoot slugs. And oh, okay. you have to set it up one way or the other. And so that kind of nixed that one for me. But I went into it going, okay, I, I'm trading this, and I'm going to get that, but I need to get something else. And so I was looking at more budget line stuff. Mm -hmm. I was pretty convinced that I wanted to go with the uh, the Hotson Flash. Flash, yeah. the Flash Pup, probably, yeah, because the magazine sits more forward on that mm -hmm. one, and it would work fine for all of us backwards shooters. The wrong-handed. Yeah, the wrong-handed. But Justin started showing me, and he didn't have one there, so I looked at him online. I think he, I think he ordered one while I was standing there, so it'll be here. But it's the Air Force Talon P. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know. And so it's- What is it? It's a, it's a single shot, which is the only drawback to it, which isn't- It's that, not really that. Which isn't I mean. that big of a drawback, right. And it's it's basically a pistol, but the Air Force puts the air tank, the big canister, on the back, and you can mount a stock on the back of the oh, bottle. Got yeah. it. And to turn the pistol into a carbine with we, no tax stamp. Great. <laughs> <laughs> no, those those are pretty cool. I I really want to get one of those Air Force air yeah. guns. And you know, theoretically, we should have plumbing advantages uh, too, because you run everything through a straight line straight right. to the yeah. bore, right? Yeah. Yeah. They make good stuff. They do. And they've been making stuff forever, too. So went home with the Diana. I'm like, yeah, let's... I, I just got the lift kit on the Forerunner. Monday, I got an appointment to get it aligned, and I'm probably putting tires on. So I'm like, dude, I got to see how much money I got You're, left yeah, exactly. after I put tires on. $1,500. But the, the Diana... I'm like, will you just hold that, that Diana Bandit for me till Monday? He's like, I think that's the last one. And he just took it off the wall. He's like, here, just take it home. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that's in 177. We were shooting that oh, today. So you did the 177. That was the only one they had. And it was actually, he says, I rec I prefer the 177 in the pistol than the You get 22. a little bit more power. You get a little more power out of it and everything. Like, okay, that works for me. Hmm. And there, it, it's so much fun. It The air tank is tiny, so yeah. you only get about... 20 or so shots out of it before you have to fill it again but man you barely crack the valve on your yeah. air tank and it's like whoa it's full <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that's what i did with guns looking forward to getting that the that dream tactical the dream that, line. that was a fairly respectable week with guns yeah, yeah. I, you actually I, tried to, stuff. I tried to make up for the last few weeks where <laughs> i've done nothing but bang out holsters all right, my turn. Yeah, here we go. So I'll try and keep <laughs> mine pretty brief because we're running a little bit lower on time and we've got to hear Mark's stuff. Didn't you listen? The people love us. They want to listen to us all the time. <laughs> we should expand it to another okay. hour. <laughs> oh, no. Well, yeah, we can do that, but you get to edit the... Hey, yeah, oh, that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> Have you ever listened to the Meat Eater podcast? They're like three hours long. Oh, I don't. It's just stream of consciousness. They don't edit anything, I don't think, but they've got some awesome stories. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so last night I had some friends come over, three friends, and we had like an AR-15 build party. Cool. And we were, yeah, we built some uppers. The two friends did a 277 Wolverine uppers. Wow. And they're like 
really fancy. So your friends are weird like you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of theirs, they're actually pretty mainstream cartridge guys. Yeah. But, you know, when all this weirdness oh, hit, that's they're true. like, well, what bullets are available? Well, who shoots 270s? Yeah. You know, not very many people. Yeah. And I guess some of the same bullets are used in the 6.8 SPC mm-hmm. as the 270 and then also the Wolverine. But we went on midway and there were a bunch of the Barmet bullets for the Wolverine you know, on sale and, yeah. you know, 500 for like 80 bucks or 82 bucks, something like that. Wow. And so it's like, well, if the availability of components is, you know, one of the issues, then they just, you know, they have the 223 AR-15s and I think they're doing a 300 blackout also. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that, that kind of stuff, sometimes when you go mainstream, it's harder to find ammo when there is a type of crunch. Yeah. And they also wanted to use them for, you know, shooting coyotes. And the Wolverine would be a pretty decent cartridge for that. And it makes perfect sense to be looking at oddball cartridges right now. Yeah. Because, yeah. Like, why not? It's what you can get. And 270 is cool. It's got really good ballistic coefficients. Yeah. It it used to be, like, super popular through the, uh, you know, like the 1910 through 1950. You know, it was like Uh king of the world. Yeah. Well, and Starline makes... The Wolverine brass, so you can buy it from them. And the, my friends, they actually ordered the brass while it was in stock. Like, it, everything else was kind of out of stock, but they had that in stock. Yeah. And uh, I think it might be sold out now. Sure. But you can always take 223 brass and then do the cut and, cut and neck it. Right. And, you know, kind of like what you would make or how you would make 300 blackout brass out of 223. Right. You can do the same thing with the with 277 Wolverine. So it's a really cool cartridge. I have multiple guns in, in that cartridge. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah, surprising. <laughs> but yeah, all it is is a barrel swap for that because it uses the same bolt as the oh, nice. 556. And so it's kind of like 300 blackout. Yeah. Not much. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just in the gun. I mean, like no, nothing. Just, I mean, huh. it's all, yeah, you just, you can do a barrel swap and you're good. Good to go. So, same mags, everything. Yeah, same mags, everything. That's, that's so it's a kind plus. of a kind of a cool cartridge. That's a plus. And then my other buddy, he liked my like handguard or rail forend a lot, and he wanted to trade me, and so I traded him. So we had to t- disassemble his six five Grendel and my six five Grendel and swap, you know, just to swap some. Well, we're handguards. swapping. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna catch something but, with all this swapping going yep. on. <laughs> Caught the fever, the <laughs> AR-15 build fever. So that was kind of fun. We did that last night till like super late. And then I was helping two of them. They stayed and I was helping them do some reloading. Cool. But the other guy, he came earlier and I helped him do some uh, 4570. So he just, he was able to get a 4570 before they all sold out. Before and they dried up. Crazy, yeah. Cool. So I loaded 600 rounds of 9mm also yesterday. Wow. So yesterday was like a super productive day, but I didn't sleep much last <laughs> night. But, and then, like I said, uh, I got that 38 special video done with that 195 grain NOE bullet. And I hope to get the ballistic gel test video done this week. And cool. it should be cool. It's, but to, you know, to spoil the beans or spill the beans or whatever... Not don't spoil, spoil, don't the spoil the beans. Spoil the beans. <laughs> spill the beans. Yeah, it's in the snubby. I did not get the expansion that I wanted, but it penetrated more because it didn't expand. Right. And so well, I can't imagine what you would have to use to launch a hundred and how many grains? As two hundred grains. Two hundred grain bullet out of a out one of, and five eighths inch barrel. I know. It's what's crazy is the bullet. You hold the bullet up to the barrel. It's as long like, as the barrel, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Gosh. But. Anyways, yeah. with the lever action, you know, sometimes oh, you start out... incredible. Yes, it, it's, it is incredible. It's the funnest thing to shoot through that lever action. Huh. So the lever action is a, is a Marlin 1894 threaded version, and it is just the... I mean, I had made a ton of ammo, so I was letting all my friends and family use it, and Noah really liked it. My son Noah, oh, but- he, was, he was going to town on the jugs and the dueling tree and stuff but cool. yeah super awesome so you guys should check out that video and yeah let's let's uh move on to the topic well i think yeah 
what Mark did with guns is kind of our topic. Well, what Mark almost did with guns. Yeah. <laughs> so, this was earlier, the beginning of this month is when this happened. Beginning of, actually, the that second January. January. Yeah. yeah. Taco and I just found out, because we're not really on Facebook so much. Right. So you're almost in trouble. Yes, that we I know. That we didn't know I earlier. Feel, I feel bad about this. Um, but we'll just kind of let you tell the story, and <laughs> so our listeners know this is kind of a sensitive. Yeah, it's a sad story. It is, but it um, has some wonderful lessons that we can learn from it. True, I, it does. So you know, I think most people know that I'm a falconer. Right. I've been flying birds and chasing rabbits and ducks and pheasants and stuff for, uh, you know, 26 or 7 years now. Ava was my uh, bird that I have most recently, the Harris Hawk. She's uh, 5 years old mm -hmm. and uh, she passed away uh, unexpected and sadly yeah. on the 2nd of uh, January. And what happened was it was completely unforeseeable situation like every accident, like every, you know, event in your life, you know, a lot of times it'll be like totally out of the blue. Right. And so what happened was we were out hunting rabbits. It was a very successful season. And this I is think. you were out with your dad that yeah, this time? Yeah, okay. I was out with my, with my father in an area in the West Desert and south a little bit from here near a little town called Goshen. Okay. So, I know exactly uh, where you're yeah. talking. And... Um, we were chasing rabbits. We got out of the car and hiked up one direction for a while. Then we saw a uh, one of the Razor Polaris Razor all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. you know, dune buggy kind of things. Right. It came up by the car, stopped and looked around a little bit, and then took off. Hmm. They were just, you know, a, a car full of people out in a Razor tooling around the desert. Okay. That's not that's not strange at all. No, that's pretty commonplace around here. So so they take off. And we're just walking around hunting rabbits. And we get back near the car, and we're standing up on a hill where we can see, you know, hundreds of yards in one direction. And like happens with hawks, they see them, see a rabbit creeping around out there a long way away, and take off and start chasing it. Mm -hmm. She flew, and I've got the GPS coordinates and all of that stuff stored on my Mm -hmm. on my phone with my GPS tracker. Yeah. Um, she flew off and was about 350 yards away when she pulled up, beautiful pitch up and yep. wing over and and then uh, crashed into the brush and caught a rabbit. Cool. We are 350 yards away. Right. And that, you know, from that distance, you can barely hear the rabbit doing what rabbits do when you catch them, which is kind of screaming. Yeah, screaming like small babies. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but what had happened was, as she was flying off in one direction, this razor with the three people in it were coming the other direction on a dirt road. And they t happened to turn um, and cross the same field that the bird was chasing the rabbit on. And it just so happens that, out of a total coincidence, the uh, rabbit crossed about 10 yards in front of the off-road vehicle mm -hmm. with the bird in hot pursuit. And that got everybody's attention. Then the bird pitches up, wings over, and catches the rabbit basically right in front of their car. Which is an awesome sight to see. Yes. I've been out with yeah. you, and it is an amazing thing to watch. It's super cool. Yep. Well, very, very unfortunately... These guys, you know, I, I have no idea what was in their minds. But they all jump out of the car with guns and start firing, and they shoot the bird and the rabbit. Oh, gosh. So, you know, I am running. At, you know, as soon as I saw that they were kind of crossing paths, I started running. Uh, my father was with me. He's, uh, you know, going to be 83. Yeah. But he's still actually really fast. <laughs> but, um, you know, we were running. We were yelling. The, the vehicle was idling next to them, so they probably couldn't hear anything. Right. And I start, you know, we were just yelling at the top of our lungs. Anyway, by the time we got there, the bird was dead. Oh, my gosh. And uh, they saw us running up. There was basically three guys with handguns. Uh -huh. So they weren't out hunting rabbits. Yeah. They were out just with guns and maybe, you know, stopping and plinking or whatever. Right. 
you know, I have no idea what motivated somebody to see an amazing thing that happens in nature to get out and start shooting at the beautiful bird and right and National Geographic right in front of them. Right, that's totally appalling to me, to yeah. be honest. That 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 would enter anybody's mind as an acceptable thing to do. Right, it's just, I don't get it. Well, running through the sagebrush, the sagebrush was. Uh, Higher than normal. It's probably like five feet high. Oh, wow. So you can just see your head above it uh-huh. as you're running through. Uh, we are just just hauling, hauling, trying to get down there. They see us coming, and we're, we're obviously upset, yelling, and running towards them. And they're all out there with, with uh, guns drawn. Right. And wondering what in the world we're doing. Mm-hmm. So when we get up and... The two groups, me and my father and the, those three guys, uh, confront each other. They're sitting there at low ready with their handguns. Right. Because they don't know why we're running up, although I think that they probably... Probably had an idea. Probably had an idea, yeah. Well, and it is not legal to shoot no. hawks. No. It's not. And so... <laughs> it, there, there's more to the story. Let, a, yeah. let alone one that... And obviously they probably didn't know it was owned by somebody, but... Right. That's not the point. Right. Yeah. yeah it, it is a federal crime to Ooh. shoot raptors. Okay. And, uh, That's so good to know. Yeah. Most people who have been through hunter safety, they, they right. know that. Uh, they know that birds are protected. Right. So we run up there. It's obviously a very, you know, high stress, high emotion kind of confrontation with basically two groups of armed individuals. Right. I, I was carrying, like I always do, uh-huh. my father as well. Uh-huh. I had not drawn my weapon at all. Okay. Neither had my father. Okay. But we get up there and they're all, you know, at, at low ready with their pistols in their hands, standing around the, you know, the bush with the dead bird and the dead rabbit. Uh-huh. You know, I'm I'm yelling at them with every, every four-letter word I can, you know, I can come up with and you know, pushing people physically away from the bird so I can get, see if the bird's alive. Anyway, in that moment of, like, high emotion and stuff and being confrontive, you know, I was really confronting the group of armed people on purpose, like, you know, I am here, get away, you know. Mm-hmm. And they were, I believe, put on the on the defensive. They probably didn't understand what was going on right. fully on your end of things. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Just a quick question. What was the age of these people? Were they younger? 30? 30. 30. 30, yeah. Clearly old enough to know better. Yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a carload of teenagers yeah. or wow. anything like that. But Wow. Um, so, uh, you know, there, basically we've got five armed people out in the desert yelling at each other. And, um, you know, things were really going poorly because... Um, you know, the verbal exchange began to happen. Right. And, you know, I was like, you know, where is my bird? You know, that was the first thing before we, I, you know, identified which bush. Right. That they were kind of standing around. And um, then it was, uh, you know, you shot my bird. And the, and the one guy in the back was like, these guys are really pissed. And he starts bringing, his, bringing the muzzle of his handgun up um, because he's afraid we're going to go nuclear and start attacking him. Right. Um, I, you know, was wearing a hawking vest and, uh, you know, glove and all that kind of hawking attire. Right. But did not, um, I did not pull the weapon, which, which is a good thing. Yeah. But, but at that point, it became clear, and in a flash, I immediately recalled the, the two Mag 40 classes that we took. Right. And um, one thing that you can do is, you know, things could have gone... Um, a whole different direction, but my goal at that point, because I remembered Mag 40 mm-hmm. and the concept of mens rea, or what would a reasonable person do in a potentially violent confrontation? Mm-hmm. What would a reasonable person do, and how would they handle that situation? Right. And I said, you know what? I could easily get to the unreasonable reaction here. That guy, the guy standing over there. Is pointing a, a gun in my direction. Mm-hmm. You know, at, at that point, I was, you know, really, really pissed off, kind of an emotional response. And right. uh, so I think that uh, if if I had not remembered at that point that the best thing that I could do then 
was to observe and get as much information as possible mm -hmm. and then deal with the situation later. Right. Um, things could have gone a lot more sideways than they did. Yeah. At that point, there wasn't anything you were going to do that was going to make the situation any better. Exactly. As far as your bird's condition yeah. and things like that. Right. So I decided at that point, my father is behind me. He makes a comment about the other guy pointing the gun in our direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, he makes a comment. Um, and I, I said, Dad, no. You know, like it, it was my, my, my father, if anybody knows him, he is the least violent confrontational person right. that you will have ever met. Right. But, uh, you know, his comment to me at that point was, uh, which one of these blanket and black guys do you want me to shoot? Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and, and so, uh, <laughs> in, anyway. Um, As a good father would do. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. But, um, anyway, um, we kind of, you know, again, because of the self-defense training I had, I knew immediately what the consequences um, would be if this turned into anything other than what it was. Right. Um, if it turned into a fist fight, would I have been able to have these guys prosecuted? Right. Would the judge have said, well, you assaulted these people. These people assaulted your bird, which is worse. Yeah. Um, you pulled a gun. That's a crime. They pulled a gun. You know, they were pointing a gun towards you. That's Is that a crime? Maybe. Probably. Yeah. But... Um, um, so if there were any more criminal activity, it probably would have meant them getting off scot-free. Yeah. Or at least muddied the situation. Right. So that the prosecution isn't clean yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. So the, the one uh, demand that I made is uh, nobody is leaving this field until I get your name and number, period. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was standing between them and their, and their four-wheeler. Yeah. And the, the one guy in back was like, yeah, come on, we're leaving. And the other guy, the, the guy that actually did shoot the bird, stopped him and said, no, we're going to exchange information. We're out of here. Yeah. And so, you know, that's the point that, that, you know, I made, I drew a line in the sand that you guys are not just going to disappear into the into the sunset here. I need to know who you are. Right. And how did that go after? I was surprised. Um, you know, I got verification. My father got the license plate of the vehicle. Good. I got to see the guy's, the guy's driver's license. Yeah. He gave me a, a telephone number. I didn't know if it was a real telephone number. Right. Yeah. It turns out it was. Good. I would have, I would have been taking pictures of their ID and stuff like that yeah. on my phone. Well, it was, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. That's, that's a scary situation. It, it, I mean, it's a sucky, sucky thing, but it, like you said, it could it have could been have a whole lot worse. Yeah, it, it could have been a whole lot worse, obviously on the legal side, but, you know, I understand now how important it is to make critical decisions ahead of time if you can. Yeah. Even if it's not the exact situation, like, you don't need to go out and say, what happens if my bird flies over there and it gets shot? But I have thought of, what am I going to do? Because I've heard it happening before. Huh. The falconers do get their birds shot. Yeah. Usually, usually it's hunters. Right. And they're out hunting pheasants and right. you know, that kind of thing. So I had made the decision that if something like this happens, I've thought it through. I am not going to pull a gun. Yeah. I'm not going to risk my life or anyone else's life. As, as nothing as I think that that guy was worth at that moment. Right. His life was not, uh, his life was valuable. Yeah. And, you know, as much as it pains me to say that, um, my dead bird does not mean that anybody has to die. Yeah. So. I think, let's, I want to put into perspective what these birds are, because I know you got Ava from a, from a breeder back east, right? Yes. So you you picked her up as a as a hatchling, is that correct? She was a a, she was a very young bird. She yeah, was... and and you guys to bond with this bird. That bird lives with you in your bedroom. It's with you twenty four seven for how long? Well, for for a long period of time, they do what what they call a falconer's wake, mm -hmm. which is a, an ancient tradition where you you basically hold the bird until the bird settles down enough to eat from your glove. Wow. And, uh, you know, sometimes it takes a couple hours. Sometimes it takes, you know, two or three or four days. Wow. But there was the investment in her 
you right. know, uh, the, the money that, to pay the breeder, uh -huh. uh, import permits, there's all kinds of weird legal things and, and so forth. But by the time it's done and her house and all that kind of stuff, even though we're just out hunting jackrabbits, uh -huh. I probably got $10,000 invested in this bird. And to be honest, the dollar amount is really nothing compared to the time the invested. Time. The yeah. time, yep. You know, and I, I've been thinking about, you know, I've been thinking about Henry. Yeah. You know, Henry cost me 500 bucks from right. a breeder, which is pretty cheap. Yeah. You know, for a purebred dog. But Henry's a family member. He is a family member. And the time, I mean, I spend, I spend more time with him than I do anybody else. Yep. Any anybody in my house, any because he goes to work with me. If I go for a, you know a fat bike ride, he's with me. We yep. go hike together. He saved you from a moose. He saved me from a moose. <laughs> yeah, and so just putting it in into kind of that perspective of how well trained he is, the bond that we have, it's no different than you know. You probably have a stronger bond with your bird than well, I do with him. I, I would say it's similar. Yeah, honestly. And because I'm I'm not underestimating your bond with Henry. He's well, Henry is amazing. He's he's pretty good. <laughs> but, but but it is it is similar. Ava was, you know, she's a raptor. You know, like regal, solitary. You know that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. But actually, she was a real snuggle monster. Uh huh. You know, bring her home after hawking and uh, feed her up in her house, and then she like I'd, I'd sit on the floor of the of her house, and she'd run over, hop up on my knee, and you know, kind of preen the, the air on your arms and, <laughs> and you have to pet her until she falls asleep and oh. put her up on her perch. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, I mean, she was kind of a cross between, you know, the super friendliest parrot you ever saw and a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> How many rabbits did she take out? She was right just shy of 400 in yeah. the five seasons that we had. That is amazing. That's so many. That's crazy. Yeah. That Jack is amazing. Rabbit. Yeah. So she decided to switch on to pheasant this season. Oh, really? Uh, which is great. We got one a couple of years ago on accident. We were out looking for rabbits, but we started to catch pheasants on purpose Yeah. Uh, this year. So, cool. Um, she was an exceptional, probably once in a lifetime bird. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely family. Yeah. So kind of to wrap it up where are things at now with I, I assume there's going to be a lawsuit there's probably legal prosecution and all this stuff well what's it, what's happening with that because people are going to want to know everything that i've talked about even the, the investigation is complete so anything we're talking about publicly here is not putting that prosecution in jeopardy right but um those people made a big mistake they yeah. you know if you wanted to especially if you are a sportsman and you wanted to ruin your life, the best way to do this would be to do what this guy did. You're talking federal offenses, which means you just lost your gun rights. Well, possibly. Okay. There's also several paths of prosecution that this can go down. Uh -huh. And they're starting in state court, and they're using the federal charges as kind of a backstop. Ah, uh, so, okay. So, you know, if we get to, you know, small-town Lehigh judge and you know, the good old boy kind of thing, well, then we go to federal court <laughs> yeah. on, on the wildlife issues. Yeah. I hope, honestly, that there is a path of redemption for all of us in this. Yeah. You know, I think the guy made a terrible, terrible, terrible decision and a big mistake. And I'm sure he wished he could take that bullet back right yeah. now. But you don't get to do that. You don't. Yeah, every that's, every, that's, every bullet that leaves the boar yeah. Yeah. is you're, yours. You're responsible for, and like, I think Mossad teaches in his class every bullet that comes out of your barrel has a lawyer attached to it. It does. And this one did. Yeah. So they're they're being charged in state court with non wildlife crimes. Okay. Basically wanton destruction and because of the money involved and 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 so forth, there's precedent when it comes to uh, bird dogs. Okay. You know, all of the training, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So they're being charged with something that is essentially legally equivalent to a felony. Yeah. And they could potentially lose their hunting privileges for a long period of time. They could, uh, you know, civil forfeiture. You know, maybe that razor ends up in, in, in you know, the Division of Wildlife. In their, their, it, their garage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But what I hope is that this never happens again. 
Yeah. So if these guys decide to accept the responsibility and not try to weasel out of it, you know, I am happy to talk to the prosecutor and, and see if there's, you know, a good faith effort to turn this into a, a learning experience. Make a positive out Make of it. Make a positive out of it. If yeah. that happens, then I would be uh, delighted to move on from this as quickly as possible. Right. But it's up to them. Yeah. You know, if they try to weasel out of it, we've got a ton of evidence. Yeah, I don't know how you weasel yeah. out of that. Well, and the reason being is that we decided not to get in a big fight in the middle of the desert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I think your cool head played off well for you. Because I was I was a mess for a long time. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. And that's thus the uh, the long time in talking about it yep. here. Because I, I mean, it was obviously hard to discuss, and I totally totally get it. But but know know what your target is and what's beyond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and. Make sure you're not being frivolous and stupid. Yeah, yeah. Which is make, exactly what. He make was sure doing. your target is something you actually want to shoot. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. Make sure it's a good idea to shoot it. Right. Yeah. You know. So, well, that that was an enlightening story. Uh, well, I I really want to want to thank Masada Yub for the class. Yeah. Because it really could have gone a different way, but that training snapped into my mind in an instant it was like this is potentially an this is an armed confrontation right here's what could go bad and here's what it could mean yeah so take a self-defense class please mm-hmm. and if you haven't in a while take another one doing it again yeah. yeah a lot of a lot of people we talked a few weeks back what are you spending your money on if you can't buy guns and ammo right now training is good of course yeah. you need ammo for it but it's worth the expense you know I've always talked about, you know, people that constantly buying a new gun. Well, instead of buying a new gun, put that money aside and take a class. It would yep. be the yeah. best money you've ever spent. One one decent gun is a good class. Yeah. 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 Yep. And, you know, find a good instructor. There's a ton of instructors, and they are not all the same. True. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you, Mark for sharing your story. I know when I told my family, they were all very sad for yeah. you. <laughs> well, my, my, mine too. Yeah. My my daughter is, uh, she's pretty choked up about it. Yeah, I, I can totally understand that, you know. So, well, like you said, hopefully there, there can be something good come out of it. I mean, I hope this people... guy doesn't decide to ruin his life, you know, because he's he's sitting at a crossroads here. He doesn't even know about. Yeah, you know, if the if the prosecutor decides, and uh, you know, if there's something positive that can come out of it, we want that to happen. Yeah. If not, we're gonna. Well, hopefully, he's got a decent uh, decent representative that isn't gonna be like, oh, we can get you out of this, and uh, you know. If if they if he tries to go that route, we're gonna throw away the key. Yeah. <laughs> As you should. Yeah. Because he obviously didn't learn anything from right. his stupidity the first time. Anyway, okay. Thank you guys. That was good to get back in person again. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Hopefully, I think that's probably the most enlightening episode we've done in a very long time. That was good information. Well, yeah. Thanks, Mark. We're not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, t- take take somebody shooting. Take somebody shooting. Hook up with your pro Second Amendment groups. You know, don't don't go rioting or anything but uh but do go stand up for yourself yeah make sure to keep in contact with your representatives yeah big time and just be a nice person yep okay there's enough i won't say it <laughs> <laughs> there's enough of the others out there we don't need any more all right okay till next time bye-bye Bye. Because life is too easy, then people make problems. Yep. And that's why we have all this like crazy political stuff and mm-hmm. some of yeah, people rioting without any no reason. No reason. <laughs> life to, life to, is too to easy. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. I'm all for making their lives harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>